Hello everyone, we are now on our week 4 of our instructional module in Purposive Communication. For today, we are going to talk about world Englishes. You heard it right, not English but Englishes. But why? There is only one English. It is because world Englishes is term used for varieties of English used in the different parts of the world. As I have mentioned, the term world Englishes refers to the differences in the English language that emerge as it is used in various contexts across the world. Scholars of world Englishes identify the varieties of English used in different social linguistic contexts, analyzing their history, background, function, and influence. Languages develop to fulfill the needs of the societies that use them. Because societies contain a diverse range of social needs, and because these needs can differ across cultures and geographies, multiple varieties of the English language exist. These include American English, British English, Australian English, Canadian English, Indian English, Philippine English, and so on. Because of that, there are now three classification of Englishes. The spread of English around the world is often discussed in terms of three distinct groups of users, where English is used respectively as first, a native language, or ENL, the primary language of the majority population of a country, such as in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. For cultures, three circles of English, that is in the inner circle, which refers to the countries where English is used as primary language, again, such as USA, Britain, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. For the second the classification of Englishes, we have a second language or ESL. It means an additional language for intranational as well as international communication in communities that are multilingual, such as in India, Nigeria, and Singapore. Most of these Englishes developed as a result of imperial expansion that brought the language to various parts of the world. Now, in Kachru's three circles of English, that is in outer circle, wherein it denotes those countries where English usage has some colonial history. This includes India, Bangladesh, Ghana, Kenya, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, even Philippines. We are part of the outer circle or that is in ESL, English as second language. Now, the third classification of English is a foreign language or EFL. It is used almost exclusively for international communication such as in Japan or even in China. They are now in the expanding circle based on Kachru's three circles of English. The expanding circle includes countries where English is spoken but where it does not necessarily have a colonial history or primary or official language status. This includes nations such as China, Japan, South Korea, Egypt, Nepal, Indonesia, Israel, Korea, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, USSR, and Zimbabwe. Any country where English is regularly spoken, even in limited context, for example, for international businesses, that does not fall under the first two categories is considered to be in the expanding circle. As you have noticed, English language plays a vital role in global communication. The importance of English as a global language has manifested itself in two primary ways. First, many regions around the world use their own variations of English called World Englishes. 
Second, English has become the world's lingua franca or universal language for groups who do not share a common first language. However, for us Filipinos, there is a need to improve our English because it is just our second language next to the Filipino language. In order to be globally competent, we have to excel both in written and oral English to be able to express ourselves clearly and to easily understand others. Learning from books is not enough for I believe that training with other people, especially with native speakers and teachers of English language, is the best way to improve our communication skills as they will be able to point out areas for improvement. At this point, let's try to differentiate or point out some differences of American English and British English. For American English, they call it as pants. While for British, they call it as trousers. For American, they call it as apartment. While for British, it's flat. For American, they call it as college. While for the British, they call it as university. For the American, it is a store. But for the British, it is a shop. For the American, it's soccer. For the British, it's football. For the American, it's counterclockwise. While for the British, they call it as anti-clockwise. For the American, it's parking lot. For the British, it's car park. For American English, it's overpass. While for British English, it's flyover. For American English, it's vacation. For British English, holiday. For American English, sidewalk. For British English, pavement. For American English, line. For British English, queue. For American English, it's flashlight. Wherein for British English, it's torch. For American English, sneakers. British English, trainers in terms of date for american english its format is it starts with the month first followed by the day followed by comma and then the year while for british english its format is date comes first before month there is no punctuation mark at all and then we have year in terms of spelling for American English, here is the spelling of center, while for British, this is the spelling of center. For American English, the spelling of color is this one, while for British English, here is the spelling of color. For American English, this is the spelling of organize, while for British English, this is the spelling of organize. For American English, they spell program as this one. While for the British English, the spelling of program is this one. There you have it. So those are some of the differences between American English and British English. How about in the Philippines? We also have our own variety of English which is known to be Philippine English or Filipino English. It is the English language as used in the Philippines, a state of Southeast Asia consisting of more than 7,000 islands. Philippine English is a legitimate nativized variety of English. It is a language used by Filipinos in controlling domains such as in science and technology, judiciary, legislature, bureaucracy, higher education, scholarly discourse, and the like. While it shares some of the linguistic properties ascribed to other varieties of English, especially those used in Asia, it has features that are unique to it. Only in the Philippines do we eat dirty ice cream, cook in dirty kitchens, get killig over romantic movies, and we watch with our barcada and pay KKB when we dine in in Karenderia where we are a suki. 
The rest of the English-speaking world, however, may now use these Philippine English terms which are among the latest additions in the Oxford English Dictionary, like barkada, which means a group of friends, buko juice, which means a drink made from the clear watery liquid inside and ripe coconut, carnapper, which means a car thief or a person who steals a motor vehicle. Despedida, which means more fully despedida party or a social event honoring someone who is about to depart on a journey or leave an organization. Dirty kitchen, which means a kitchen where everyday cooking is done by household staff. Gimmick, which means a night out with friends. Halo halo, which means a dessert made of mixed fruits, sweet beans, milk, and shaved ice. Kikai, which means a girl or woman interested in beauty products and fashion. KKB, or kanyakanyang bayan, literally each one pays their own. Mabuhay, which means an exclamation of salutation or greeting. Pandesal which means a yeast-raised bread roll made of flour, eggs, sugar, and salt. Pulutan, which means food or snacks provided as an accompaniment to alcoholic drinks. Sinigam, or in Filipino cookery, it is a type of soup made with meat, shrimp, or fish and flavored with a sour ingredient such as tamarind or guava. Suki, a buyer or seller involved in an arrangement whereby a customer regularly purchases products or services from the same provider in exchange for favorable treatment. Utang na loob, which means a sense of obligation to return a favor owed to someone. Now, here are some differences in terms of pronunciation between American English and Philippine English. For American English, it's Indian. While for the Philippine English, it's Indian. For American English, mountain. Philippine English, mountain. American English, cupboard. Philippine English, cupboard. American English, calcium. Philippine English, calcium. American English, potassium. Philippine English, potassium. American English, restaurant. Philippine English, restaurant. American English, coupon. Philippine English, coupon. American English, new. Philippine English, new. American English, spinach. Philippine English, spinach. American English, backpack. Philippine English, backpack. American English, ingredient. Philippine English, ingredient. American English, Facebook. Philippine English, Facebook. American English, biscuit. Philippine English, biscuit. American English, internet. Philippine English, internet. American English, McDonald's. Philippine English, McDonald's. In terms of use for American English, they call this as flip-flops, while for the Philippine English, we call it as slippers. For American English, it's fridge, while for the Philippine English, it's ref or rep. For American English, it's napkin. While for the Philippine English, it's tissue. For American English, it's AC. While for Philippine English, it's aircon. For American English, it's bunk bed. While for Philippine English, it's double deck. For American English, it's cracker. While for Philippine English, it's biscuit or biscuit. For American English, they call it as first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Well, for Philippine English, it's grade one. 
grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, and grade 6. In sum, Philippine English is a highly intelligible and acceptable language. Its vocabulary is dynamically expanding, and its rules and conventions in grammar, style, and usage is flexible and eclectic. Because of these characteristics, Philippine English is continually evolving, benefiting from a multi-dimensional effort of propagation through education, media, and literature and the dominance of accented Filipino agents in the business process outsourcing industry. In addition, the Philippines is recognized globally as one of the largest English-speaking nations with majority of its population having at least some degree of fluency in the language. English has always been one of the official languages of the Philippines and is spoken by million Filipinos. It is the language of commerce and law as well as the primary medium of instruction in education. There you have it. Now for your activity number three. In terms of pronunciation, below are two examples of varieties of English that focus on pronunciation. You need to classify them whether it is in American English or Philippine English and write them under the correct column. For number one, it's elementary versus elementary. For second one, it's e-street versus street. For third, bridge versus bridge. For the fourth one, it's as versus asks. Fifth, thought versus thought. Sixth, closes versus closes. Seventh, that versus that. Eighth, thin versus thin. Ninth, measure versus measure. And for the tenth one, we have cheap versus cheap. Well, for activity number four, below are examples of two varieties of English that focus on expressions. Classify them accordingly and write them under the correct column. For number one, underground economy versus black economy. So which one is in American English while the other one should be in British English. Next, number two, counterclockwise versus anticlockwise. Number two, current account versus checking account. Number four, housing development versus housing estate. Fifth, Elementary school versus junior school. Sixth, labor union versus trade union. Seventh, expiry date versus expiration date. Eighth, rubbish versus garbage. Ninth, raincoat versus Macintosh. And tenth, third party insurance versus liability insurance. For your activity number 5, what you need to do is just to read the narrative essay entitled For a While by Matthew Sutherland and then you need to answer the 5 questions below. There you have it. If you have finished the video, kindly comment down the words that will appear on your screen. And that concludes our week 4 instructional module in purposive communication. Thank you so much and have a great day.